Over the past year, we've done a few desk setups here on the channel, and you guys have absolutely loved them. Now, I've been using the M1 iMac since its release, and I figured it was time to change things up a little bit and go for something clean with a different kind of vibe. Now, if you've been here before, you've noticed that my cable management is always on point. You guys know that I absolutely hate wires. In today's episode, we'll cover my M1 iMac setup that was created with productivity and minimalism in mind. Now, we'll also be giving you guys a tour of the game room here in the next few weeks. I know a ton of you have been asking for it over the past year, year and a half. So that video is finally coming. If you want to see it, just make sure you're subscribed. And if you enjoy content like this, let both me and the YouTube algorithm know by gently smashing that like button for me. It truly helps me out. The theme we've got going on this time around is a setup which focused more on a lighter aesthetic, which is why I went with white for most of the setup. To kick things off, let's start with this desk from a company called Wolka. I absolutely love this desk for a ton of reasons. First off, it's got a nice, clean, modern form factor. The desk itself comes in at just over 350 bucks, which you can pick up for $100 off right now using the coupon code I'll leave down below in the description. It's an electric sit-stand desk that's super quiet and easy to set up. I went with white, but it does come in with a ton of different color options to choose from. White and black are obviously my favorite, but it's also available in walnut, oak, mahogany, and blue. Now, what kind of desk would this be if it didn't have some tech in it? The desk is equipped with anti-collision technology that detects and locks into place when it senses something even as light as paper under it. It supports up to 220 pounds and has a fully programmable handset with four memory preset buttons catered to your favorite height and workflow, whether it's standing or sitting. The desk itself comes in at four feet in length and two feet in width with some options for cable management. It also has dual motors, which gives you that smooth experience for many years to come, all backed by a five-year warranty. And one thing I've noticed over the past year, year and a half that's made me super productive is time blocking. Now, obviously this isn't anything new, but what I've done is set up segments of say 45 minutes to where I focus on just one task until I finish it, followed by a short break. To keep myself accountable with this, I have a dope clock that I picked up on Amazon that has a large LED countdown timer with three different levels of volume to indicate when your time is up and when to reset for your next task. It's magnetic and comes in under 20 bucks, not to mention it looks dope. I have a ton of these laying around and honestly this paired up with a small notepad and using Notion has been life changing for me. All of my notifications have been turned off on my phone to where I'm only using it to make phone calls. I set a priority of things that have to be done throughout the next day in my notepad and cross them off as I finish them. This makes focusing and finishing tasks 10 times more productive for me. Next to my timer we have the Seagate Fire CUDA 2TB external SSD and my Sony CF Express card reader. The Seagate has been one of my favorite go-tos over the past year when it comes to external SSDs. It sports read and write speeds of up to 2000 megabits per second and is as fast as it gets for an SSD that doesn't support Thunderbolt technology. It also has a customizable LED on the outside along with full support through its software. It looks dope for this overall look I'm going for and if I do need to go ahead and go the Thunderbolt route, I always have my Samsung X5 Thunderbolt SSD close by. The CF Express card reader has been my go-to for everything since it launched alongside the Sony A7S III. It comes in at just over 100 bucks and has worked flawlessly for me since day one. Now when I do need a second display for small tasks or if I'm just watching some sports or the market in the morning, I have my M1 iPad Pro to the left of me with my Apple Pencil. I just did a full review on this guy and my experience with using it daily over the past two months about a week ago, so make sure you check out that video if you haven't already. I'm using the 12 South Book Arc to hold it up most of the time, which lets me also hold up my ThinkPad Nano if I need to get some work done on my Windows laptop. Behind that, we have some fake plants from Ikea to give some color to the overall white vibe I was trying to accomplish, next to some of my favorite speakers I've ever used. I'm sure you've all seen these before in my previous builds. These are the Audio Engine A2 Plus Bluetooth speakers. They come in at just over 250 bucks and are absolutely amazing, especially for their size. Now for this particular instance, I chose not to use speaker stands, but if you guys are interested in some, they sell them separately, which I will make sure to have linked down below for you guys, along with everything else that you'll see in this video. Another game changer for me has been this screen bar from BenQ that just sits neatly at the top of my iMac. It saves you the time and space on your desk when you need to get some reading or writing done thanks to its sleek design and fit. Now thanks to its lighting and auto dimming technology, it helps offset some of that harsh lighting around you or even add to lighting you don't have for an overall more pleasant workflow. You don't need any screws or tape. This screen bar sits nicely on the back of your monitor and has a nice counterbalance with enough room to fit most screens in today's market. It's glare free, flicker free. It covers a ton of space without any of its lighting ever reaching back towards your eyes. So you won't have to worry about any harsh blue lighting giving you any problems. It connects seamlessly through USB and adjusts to suit a few different angles. At the top, it has a button to turn it on and off, an auto dimming feature, and buttons to adjust the color temperature and brightness. It even does a fantastic job of covering up your webcam for you if you don't want anyone snooping in and watching what you're doing. Can't recommend this screen bar enough. Now for my chair, I have a simple one that I picked up at Ikea that works great with the overall look and design. 
since this is a sit stand desk i don't do too much sitting and if i ever do it's only for an hour or two at the most so i don't really have to worry about any back pain for my peripherals we have the sony wh1000 xm4s that have been the staple and go-to over the years for me i tried the airpods max and i have reviewed both but i always seem to come back to these and since they now have multiple device support they work great when i'm listening to music and editing or taking phone calls at their price point they are a solid buy and i know you'll love using them in any scenario especially noisy ones thanks to the fabulous active noise cancellation you get with these for typing we have the apple magic keyboard with touch id that matches the imac now touch id has been a game changer over the years and it feels even more seamless when using it on this imac a simple press and i can lock or unlock my screen without any hesitation at all the keyboard matches the color of the iMac that you pick up, and thanks to those colors, we have a little bit of flavor we've all been missing out on over the past few years when it comes to all-in-one desktops. It's also been one of my favorites to use over the years since they switched back to everyone's favorite keys. Next to the keyboard, we have my favorite mouse to use for everything. Here we have the matte white version of the Glorious Model O Wireless. You guys have seen me review this thing when it first came out, and it hasn't left my setup since. Whether it's wired or wireless, for the price and design, this is a must-have for me, and I can't suggest it enough. The MX Master 3 from Logitech is also my second choice, but this just looks and feels so much better to me. Not to mention it's light as a feather and sports RGB technology. The dongle is USB type A, so we'll make sure to leave a link for the USB type A to see adapters I've been using and recommending from Syntec down below for you guys. So you can pick up a two pack for under 10 bucks over on Amazon. For lighting, we stay consistent here in the studio and up in the game room using a ton of different color options from Philips Hue. We have the floor lamp giving us some color here from the side, followed by a set of Hue play lights behind my display. Controlling everything through the Hue app makes it super easy to set your favorite colors and schedules within seconds, giving you the best overall lighting experience you've ever come across. Which then leads us into the 24 inch iMac in silver that's almost fully specced out with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. It's got the same powerful M1 chip that we've seen in both the MacBook and iPad lineups, now combined with an amazing display and peripherals that match. Using just one screen has helped me focus more on certain tasks as of late, and it makes more sense to take this route if I'm not gaming or streaming and I need multiple displays like I have up in the game room. This has been a beast of a machine for me and does handle a ton of different workflows and applications all running at the same time with no issues at all. With the recent update from Adobe on Premiere Pro, we have seen some improvements and editing is definitely possible without any hiccups, especially if you're a Final Cut Pro user. This higher-end iMac model has two Thunderbolt 4 and two USB Type-C ports, which surprisingly for me have been enough for what I'm doing on this desktop. I'm super pumped for the future and what Apple's got going on with that 27-inch or 30-inch Pro model they're working on that has that M1X chip, which hopefully we'll see here soon with both the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pro models. As always, I'm curious to know what you guys thought about this setup and what your experience been like with the M1 iMac. So make sure you let me know down below where you'll also find the links to everything they've covered in today's video. If you want to see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, it truly helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.